All right, Atlantis, uh, we are ready for the, uh, the event. How about you? Uh, Atlantis is ready for the event. Okay, ABC News, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Atlantis for a voice check. Atlantis, this is ABC News. Do you hear me? Atlantis has you loud and clear. That's terrific. Are you, uh... And so away we go, Atlantis. I, I want to ask really all four of you your feelings on this being the final flight of the 30-year shuttle history. Well, I'll start off. Uh, first, let me say it's been an absolute honor to be a part of this final crew. Um, this was a... Uh, this is a tough decision uh, for, uh, there are a number of extraordinarily qualified people to do it. Um, we, we took on the task, of course, we were just a crew of four, and uh, I'd like to think that uh, we went up there, did a bang-up job with the limited number of resources that we had. And, uh, of course, uh, as, uh, as we just approach landing here, uh, we're, we're going through a series of laughs. Uh, yesterday, for example, the shuttle's robotic arm that we had used for 30 years to deploy and retrieve satellites, um, and uh, we had some fantastic statistics read up to us. Uh, the last time we put it away, it's hard to believe we'll ever use it again. But uh, I'm going to pass the mic around a little bit. I'm sure somebody else has something I'd like to share. Sir, and it, uh, it, it's been a, uh, an interesting training flow because, as, as uh, our commander said, it, there are a lot of, a number of lasts, and they started out small, the last uh, 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 specific sim on a certain system, and then they got bigger and bigger until we saw the, uh, the last rollout of the uh, space shuttle to the pad. And it started getting real, and every once in a while it would kind of hit you. And the, the same thing's happened during the mission. Uh, we've uh, gone through a number of different milestones, and as you get the bigger ones and big ones uh, behind you, then you kind of have a chance to pause a little bit less, a little bit more as the uh, as the pressure is off, and you can think, wow, you know, this is the last time we're doing that. And for me, it, it kind of hits me when I'm sitting down the mid-deck sometimes at the end of the day while we eat, and uh, you finally have a chance just for a couple of minutes to, to grab a bite to eat and think, and think, and I think of the past crews that have, have sat down here and shared a meal and uh, and think about, wow, this is the last time. And then I'll think about the future of, of Atlantis. We're, just, we're not going to just retire. We're going to share with others in, the, in uh, the Kennedy Space Center. So other people will be able to get a chance to get up close and see what a beautiful vehicle it is. I'd like to ask you, Mission Specialist Sandy Magnus, do you expect to go into space again? Oh, gosh, that's really a hard question. I have a feeling probably not, but I have yet to talk with our chief about that. Um, just like on my last mission, I treated this mission as if it was going to be my last mission and tried to savor every moment I was on the space station and every moment we're here on Atlantis and get those last glances out uh, the window at our beautiful Earth and, and try and imprint those on my memory as well. Pilot Doug Hurley, I realize she's a very delicate craft. She is incredibly intricate to a degree that many of us can't comprehend. But ultimately, what's it like to fly her? Well, um, it, it's just uh, it's a dream come true, actually. It, it, it flies uh, much better than our simulators uh, show that she should fly. And uh, it's just been an absolute pleasure to get to fly the yesterday for me to get to do the fly around and then uh, you know some of the uh, rendezvous burns that we did and uh, we're really looking forward to bringing her home tomorrow but it's been just uh, just a dream to get to do this Doug what's it going to be like to land the space shuttle for the very last time Doug passed it off to me because, uh, you know, the, the pilot is the pilot uh, the, the left-seater lands, and uh, Doug would do an absolute fantastic job at answering that question. But uh, uh, I've had one opportunity to land before. It was extraordinarily exciting, uh, you know, uh, but that, probably the one word I could say is it works just like the simulator. We have, we have uh, an in-flight simulator that, uh, that we use and practice with, and uh, I'm absolutely astounded at, at how closely uh, the space shuttle replicates the in-flight simulator. So uh, we're going to have a, a 
I believe a pre-dawn landing tomorrow. If we land on time, uh, day or night, uh, we're ready to come home anytime. Chris Ferguson, commander of the final mission of the 30-year space shuttle history, I, I, I want to ask you, what do you see as the future of the American space program? Well, we were, we were discussing this just the other day. You know, uh, it, it may seem like, um, um, like a, a sort of an ending, and I suppose to a degree it is. You know, the space shuttle's been with us. It's been the heart and the soul of the human space flight program for about 30 years, and, you know, it's a little sad to see it go away. But, you know, we have to understand these systems to operate and maintain are extraordinarily costly. And, and in order to go beyond, uh, because, of course, the shuttle can only stay in low Earth orbit, in order to go beyond low Earth orbit again, we're going to have to pause and we're going to have to stand down, and we're going to have to channel some of those resources that we use uh, to fund and operate the space shuttle uh, so we can build another vehicle. And uh, we're going to go beyond again someday. Um, hopefully it's, it, it's in the not-too-far-distant future. And we'll turn over this low or, uh, Earth orbit business, this uh, space station servicing business, to, uh, to commercial companies. But uh, hopefully in the not-too-distant future, you're going to see a heavy lift vehicle manufactured and uh, by our uh, commercial partners designed by NASA in partnership. And we're going to go back uh, to the moon, back to Mars. So the future is very bright. Uh, but at the moment, it's a little somber because we are saying goodbye to an old friend. Well, Colonel Rex Walheim, Mission Specialist, Sandy Magnus, Mission Specialist, Colonel Douglas Hurley of the Marines, the pilot, and to you, Christopher Ferguson, Captain of the Navy and Mission Commander, I know that we here at Good Morning America join with all of us watching at home in wishing you and Atlantis a very safe return. Atlantis ISS. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the ABC News portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from CBS News. Okay. Atlantis, this is CBS News. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear, CBS. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. We should be ready to go in just one second. Was that okay? Three, two, and hold on, hold on, hold on. And three, two. First, the shuttle Atlantis left the International Space Station for the last time Tuesday and is now heading home as the 30-year-long U.S. shuttle program comes to a bittersweet end. Atlantis is scheduled to land in Florida tomorrow morning, just before 6 Eastern time. And joining us from space this morning is the crew of Atlantis, Commander Chris Ferguson, Pilot Doug Hurley, and Mission Specialist Sandy Magnus and Rex Walheim. Good morning to all of you. This is a, a real treat for all of us here at CBS News this morning. Hey, good morning to you, uh, CBS. Uh, it's always a treat for us to be able to share just a little piece of the, uh, of the excitement of space flight with you. Commander Ferguson, let me ask you this first question. This is a historic final journey home. How has this mission been? How bittersweet is it to know that you're coming home on the shuttle for the very final time? Well, I'll tell you, we have had just a, a, an event-filled and packed mission. And, uh, you know, what I had, had kind of told everybody all along was that we were not going to fully appreciate the significance of the event until after the wheels had stopped. And just yesterday in the mid-deck, I was talking to Sandy about, uh, about the fact that, yeah, you know what, I really do feel like it's coming near the end. And I can almost sense uh, that final wheel stop call. And it's, uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be an emotional moment for a lot of people who have dedicated their lives to the shuttle program for 30 years. But we're going to try to keep it upbeat. We're going to try to keep it light. We're going to try to make it a celebration of, what, uh, of the tremendous crowning achievements that have occurred over the last 30 years with the tremendous satellites that have been de deployed uh, from the shuttle and, all, of course, the uh, construction of the International Space Station. Uh, was the mission successful? 
Well, no mission is successful until you're finally on the ground. I would have to say that up to this point, uh, it's been highly successful. Uh, Sandy, Rex, Doug, every one of them, uh, you know, we all put forth 110%. We got about 20,000 pounds of cargo transferred into and back out of the space station again. Uh, we, uh, we have them all set. They're, uh, they're in a good posture to wait for about a year until our commercial partners come on board and begin, uh, begin the resupply uh, mission that the shuttle has formerly had. Exactly the future of the space program right now. I know everyone knows that the shuttle program is coming to an end after 30 years. There is no vehicle that is ready to go right now. Uh, where, where is the future of the space program for the United States at this point? Well, the future is bright. We're in a kind of a transition period, which is a little bit uncomfortable as usual. But what we're going to be doing is handing over the access to low Earth orbit, getting to the space station, to and from, to commercial providers who are going to build rockets that will get us to and from the space station. That will free up uh, NASA to do the, the heavy lifting of the beyond low Earth orbit flights, to go to places we haven't been for a long time or ever, like the moon, an asteroid, or maybe Mars. So it's a kind of a two-pronged effort. And uh, while we get to this transition part, it'll be hard, uh, but we'll get there and we'll be going and farther and farther and going to new places real soon. Yeah, how's it been to just have four of you there? I know normally the missions usually have more astronauts on board, but it's just been four of you. Um, have you had a chance to really bond up there during this historic final journey? Oh, I, I think definitely, uh, you know, we, we've had to just work so closely together and be so well coordinated because, you know, your typical shuttle mission, there's six or seven folks, so that you, you tend to be working more with another person, and there's been a lot of times where we just had to depend on the other person to cover a separate task, uh, and, you know, I personally didn't, I don't think I fully appreciated how much more work we would have to do with only four by six or seven, so... Uh, it, it's been a little bit of an eye-opener because we, we really have been uh, just stretching it, working very hard every day. Sandy, if I could just pose this last question to you. What's your message to all those people, the thousands of people over the years that have been such an instrumental part of the shuttle program as you now say goodbye to this program after 30 years? Well, you know, really the heart and soul of the space program is the people that work in the space program. It's a group of people, unlike any other uh, field, I guess, because everyone's so passionate and so dedicated. They work so hard, they take it to heart. And it's true of all the people that I've met in the United States who work in various aspects of the space program. It's also true of the people who I've met uh, in other countries through my work with the International Space Station. I mean, there is a huge number of people worldwide who passionately believe in space flight and who dedicate their lives to it. And it's because of these people that the shuttle program was so successful for the last 30 years and we were able to do the amazing things that we were able to do. And it's because of these people that the International Space Station has been so successful and will continue to be successful. And the same group of people will, have, will carry forward their momentum and eventually get us out of low Earth orbit to these other destinations that Rex was talking about earlier. And before we say goodbye, Sandy, just one final question to you. Has anyone been giving you a hard time, the crew, maybe through emails or any messages from uh, Mission Control about your space hair, what zero gravity has done to your hair? Well, you know, usually for events like this, I like to leave it out because it illustrates that we are indeed in zero gravity. I mean, these guys have kind of boring hair, so it's not so fun. But they do, uh, they do get, give me trouble occasionally about the Medusa-like effect of it. <laughs> well, it's an interesting look, that's for sure. Hey, we wish you all the very, very best, and we thank you so much for taking the time and talking with us. This has been a treat for all of us here, and we're so proud of you, and we wish you safe return to planet Earth. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Atlantis, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the CBS News portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from CNN. Pop up there. All right, Allie, pay attention to this next story. I'm not. Atlantis, this is CNN. How do you hear me? We've got a story to tell you about today. Uh, Bill Gates uh, has to reinvent. Yes, the toilet. Fantastic. Your anchor will be Allie Velshi. Allie, uh, this is a live-to-air interview. Um, so stand by. I'll give you an update as to how far we are away. 200 years, and they say it's important because people in other uh, parts of the, the world can't really afford uh, the porcelain. 
uh, and, and the thinking here is that it is, it is actually done more for health and hygiene, to the, the toilet, uh, than anything else. So right. let's find a new one that even goes further and becomes more affordable. Good exactly. story. You're usually not a potty mouth, but that was a good occasion to be one. Jackie Jarris in the Weather Center will check in with you a little later on. Hey, the astronauts aboard the space shuttle Atlantis are orbiting hundreds of miles above Earth right now. And coming up in three minutes, we're going to talk to them live right here on CNN. There they are standing by. But first, the quote of the day is from one of our congressmen. Can you guess which one? said this, quote, you are the most vile, unprofessional, and despicable member of the U.S. House of Representatives. If you have something to say to me, stop being a coward and say it to my face. Otherwise, shut the heck up. See who was talking about that right after this break. It's nine minutes after the hour. Okay, Atlantis, we're in our commercial break. It'll be about three minutes away. Okay, we copy. Atlantis is CNN, two minutes away. Copy. Atlanta's about one minute back. Copy. About 15 seconds to your lead in. years ago, the first space shuttle launched into space. This year, the shuttle era ends. Let's take a look at the world's first reusable space vehicle. The space shuttle system has got three main parts. The orbiter, that one there, holds the crew and payload. The huge orange external tank holds fuel, and the two solid rocket boosters, those things on the side, provide most of the shuttle's lift off, uh, lift during the first two minutes of flight. Now, all of the components are usable, they're reusable, except the big orange tank. It burns up in the atmosphere after each launch. Now, fully loaded, the shuttle system weighs about four and a half million pounds. Uh, for those of you who are counting, that's about 300 elephants. Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavor have taken 130 flights in total into the final frontier. They carried more than 350 people into space. The shuttles have traveled more than half a billion miles, more than enough to get to the planet Jupiter. 
one zero and lift off the final lift off of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle America will continue the dream that was that stirring moment on July 8th uh, at the Kennedy Space Center the final shuttle mission uh, that took off that day is wrapping up now it began on July 8th with that incredible launch of the space shuttle Atlantis there you see it heading toward the clouds just about to go through. It was a cloudy day. There were some questions as to whether it was going to take off, but it did. Uh, an historic uh, takeoff that was uh, watched by over a million people in person, never mind those watching it on TV. Commander Chris Ferguson, Pilot Doug Hurley, Mission Specialists Rex Walheim and Sandy Magnus have begun, or well, they've been in space ever since that day. They're still there. There they are right now. The shuttle is flying above the Atlantic Ocean. Those astronauts join us live from space where they're prepping for Tomorrow morning's landing, 24 hours from now. Uh, thanks to all of you so much for joining us. Uh, this is the last time the shuttle astronauts will ever be interviewed live on CNN. Let's start with Chris Ferguson, the commander. Uh, Chris, uh, this is the last uh, space shuttle mission. When you think of all that's been done in space um, and all that is being planned from here on, it almost feels like you are going to be a veteran of the golden age of, of space travel. Well, first off, uh, hello, Ali. It's uh, it's great to uh, speak with you here, and uh, welcome aboard the flight deck of the Space Shuttle Atlantis on her final day in space. You know, I, I don't, I wouldn't say this is the end of the golden age. It's certainly the end of perhaps a, a very uh, specific age where just a select few can go into space. I think that what we're going to see in the next few years is a very broadening horizon, an opportunity for people who have never had an opportunity to go into space uh, to at least get to low Earth orbit. And uh, what we'll do is we'll turn over the reins of that business to our commercial uh, partners, and uh, that'll enable NASA to take the resources we put into the shuttle and uh, hopefully go beyond low Earth orbit again in the not-too-distant future. Uh, Sandy Magnus, uh, mission specialist, uh, you uh, enjoy, uh, among other things that you do in space, you enjoy cooking. You've been known to uh, cook up some special treats. I know you made Christmas cookies once, and you, you made salsa for the uh, Super Bowl. You got anything planned for the final meal up in space? Um, I don't have anything planned, but I may end up surprising the guys. You know, the problem with the shuttle missions are they're so busy, and this one has been incredibly busy. I haven't had time to do much space cooking, but I did uh, give some tips to the space station guys, so if they had some time, they could try a few of my recipes. Uh, Chris Ferguson, uh, we're going to be watching you very closely. Uh, one of the cities I, I spend my time in and live in is Philadelphia. You're a local uh, from that uh, area. What do you got to say to the folks uh, down on Earth uh, who are going to be watching you bring that thing in beautifully tomorrow morning? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I, I guess uh, what I said to the folks when they left Mission Control, uh, one of our orbit ships, we spoke to them for the last time uh, from orbit yesterday, and I said, uh, I said to them as they walked out of the room to look up and make a memory. And, and I'll say that to everybody who has an opportunity to perhaps see the landing real time or see the, uh, see the shuttle uh, on the runway is take a good look at it and make a memory because you're never going to see anything like this again. It's been an incredible ride. Uh, Rex, how are you feeling about this? Uh, you guys are going to land. I mean, normally there's a sort of a camaraderie. There's a club of people who, uh, who have taken, who have flown on the space shuttle. That sort of club closes tomorrow. What's your feeling about this final landing? Well, I think it, uh, it is historic in that nature, but I think it's going to open up an, a new era of space flight because right now there have been a tremendous amount of people who've flown in space in the shuttle, the vast majority that have ever flown in space. But we want to take that next step, get access to Earth orbit, low Earth orbit, cheaper and more frequent. And uh, we can do that by partnering with our commercial partners. And then uh, that can allow NASA to really focus on the exploration, going beyond low Earth orbit, going to the harder destinations, an asteroid, the moon, or Mars. And uh, I think it's going to be a, an extremely enjoyable and extremely exciting time for NASA. It's just we have to get through this transition. Transitions are always hard, but uh, we'll get through it, and we'll uh, we have to have a uh, better tomorrow. Well, the whole world's going to be watching uh, when you all land tomorrow as you approach uh, for the final time the landing of the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Good luck to all of you. Godspeed. Uh, and have a safe next 24 hours. Rex Walheim, Mission Specialist. Sandy Magnus, uh, Mission Specialist. Chris Ferguson, uh, the, uh, the Commander. And Doug Hurley, uh, the pilot. Thanks to all of you, and we look forward to watching this for CNN. We'll cover it live uh, tomorrow morning. Coming up on American Morning at 8.10 Eastern Time, the head of NASA, Dr. Charles Bolton.
Atlantis, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the CNN portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Fox News. Atlantis, this is Fox News. How do you hear me? Hey, uh, welcome aboard Atlantis is Flight Deck. We have you loud and clear. Terrific. My name is Bill Hemmer, and it is an honor to uh, spend the next couple of minutes with you. I was there for the liftoff of STS-134. It was the shortest mission visible <laughs> on Earth before the shuttle disappeared into the clouds after about a total of 12 seconds. Uh, but 135 was a beautiful liftoff, and congratulations to you as you wind down this mission. Okay, here we go, guys. Here are my questions to you. I've got four specific questions. I'm going to go uh, in a bit of a different order. I'm going to start with the pilot, Doug Hurley, on this. Here we go. Three, two, and one. Astronaut Mike Fossum tweeted from space only a few hours ago a beautiful picture. And he said this on his tweet, when will such a beautiful ship dock again to the International Space Station? And I think that's what you and so many people down here in America are wondering. And I, uh, to pilot Hurley, you were driving at the time. What was that separation like, knowing it was the last time? Uh, it was uh, just unbelievably breathtaking uh, as we backed away from the ISS yesterday. Um, you know, they plan it such that we get we get out to about 600 feet as the sun rises uh, behind us, so it lights up the arrays first and then uh, lights up the rest of the space station. It was just beautiful. And uh, we really enjoyed, uh, you know, one last lap around the International Space Station before we started heading home. Well, it, it is such a structure that has been built over the past decade and um, really remarkable accomplishment for NASA and really the friends of NASA from all over the world. The shuttle commander, Chris Ferguson. Gene Cernan is a man you know. He was the last one to walk on the moon 39 years ago. He wrote a piece that's out this morning. He said, if we don't watch where we are going, we will end up where we are headed. Now, what do you think about the United States relying on the Russians for at least five years to get back in space with man spaceflight? Well, you know, first off, let me say that the Russians have been just incredible partners with us in space. Um, you know, you recall the Columbia tragedy back in uh, 2003. If it weren't for our partners there, we would have had to demand the space station, which is certainly something we didn't want to do. So uh, they're, they're great, reliable partners. Now, should we be dependent upon them? No, I don't think it's necessarily a case of us or them. I really think that we need a redundant way. We need two different ways to get people to low Earth orbit. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's, uh, there's a, certainly a gap here, and I, uh, I have no particular issue with relying on partners uh, because that's what partners are for, to help you through perhaps a time where you need to pull back and regroup. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a short hiatus, but I'm very confident our commercial partners, uh, we've seen uh, SpaceX already launch an orbital vehicle and recover it uh, safely in the Pacific Ocean, and uh, there are other commercial partners that are not too far behind. So uh, it'll be a few years. Um, you know, I'm a little uneasy with uh, just a single string to orbit, if you would. In other words, just one way to do it. But uh, we'll recover from this, and uh, we'll use the resources that were devoted to the shuttle program to do it. Yeah, you think about that gap. 25 years ago, Ronald Reagan invited the friends and allies of the United States to join the U.S. in, in its space program. And the result was that beautiful structure you left behind the International Space Station. Uh, to Specialist Sagne, uh, Sandy Magnus, then, on this question. What does President Obama need to do to help lead NASA to that next stage? Well, certainly, I think we need a, a long-term space plan. You know, space flight is a very complicated business, and it takes plans that last longer than two or three or four years. We need a decades-long plan, and we need to stay focused on that plan, and we need to execute that plan. Um, it's not, it's not something you know. Doing operations in space and developing vehicles that operate in space requires that sort of long-term thinking, long-term planning, and long-term commitment. So that's certainly a good place to start. Yeah, I hope you're right. Specialist Rex Walheim gets the toughest question today.
What was the best wake-up song? Elton John, Paul McCartney, or Michael Stipe from R.E.M.? Uh, they were all obviously just amazing, uh, and uh, it uh, it was uh, quite a treat to sit there and uh, in the dark of the space of the mid deck to, to listen to bits of those songs. And then, even more important than the song was the personal greetings that those uh, fantastic artists took time out to say good morning to us. It just meant the world to us. So uh, they were all wonderful. I bet it did. Thank you for your time. Come on home safely, okay? God bless you all, and God bless America. Thanks today. Thank you, Bill. We appreciate it. Atlantis, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Fox News portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from NBC News. Atlantis, this is NBC News Washington. Do you copy? NBC, uh, we have you loud and clear on the flight deck of the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Well, it's nice to see all of you. Last time we talked, we were in Houston, and you guys were preparing for this mission. This is Tom Costello. Um, Commander Ferguson, let me ask you first. On that day back in Houston, you said to me that when you pull away from the space station, that's when this is really going to hit you. It's really going to resonate. Your thoughts uh, on having pulled away now from the space station for the last time, you're on the last day of the last mission for the shuttle. Um, your thoughts on what all of this means for, for you and for America. You know, uh, Tom, it's uh, funny. We were discussing this just a little bit earlier um, with uh, with Sandy down in the mid-deck, and, and I looked at her and I said, gosh, you know, Sandy, it feels like it's really about to end. And uh, for, uh, for certainly our nine-month training flow and the first hectic 12 days of our mission, we didn't think we would ever see the end. But now we're beginning to, I guess, see the light at the end of the tunnel, if you can call it a light. Um, but I'll tell you, when you pull away from the space station, it just makes you enormously proud that, uh, that not just our country, but the global community can pull together the resources enough to construct that incredible vehicle in orbit. So as the space shuttle does retire, and we hate to see it go, we know that it is living, it's leaving an incredible lasting legacy, and of that we're just extraordinarily proud, and the space shuttle program should be extraordinarily proud of what it's left behind. Sandy, let me ask you to reflect on that as well. Uh, you had some very poignant comments uh, about America's role in space when we talked back in Houston. So as now you pull away from the space station, you prepare for a landing, uh, your thoughts, uh, what have you reflected on over the last two weeks or so? Well, as, as Fergie said, we've been really busy, but uh, when I was aboard the space station, I stayed up a little late and uh, spent some time in the cupola. And just as, as when I was living on the space station, it's just it's amazing when you look at the, that orbiting laboratory and, and think about all the people involved in building it around the world and, and our role uh, in America is starting that program and, and getting everyone involved in that program. And it just shows you what we can do when we put our minds to it and focus our efforts and, and commit. And I think with that same amount of commitment, that same amount of passion, that same amount of enthusiasm, we pretty much can do anything. And, and going to the moon or Mars or an asteroid is certainly our next step, and I anticipate we will be able to do that because of the people involved and the determination and commitment. Rex, let me ask you, you know, through the miracle of technology, I'm talking to you from a hotel room in Orlando where I'm preparing for your landing. But And some of that, it occurs to me, the, the incredible technology as a result of what space has brought to America, the, the technological capability for communication, whatever. Can you reflect back on what has what is the shuttle program done for America in terms of advancements, in terms of technology and medicine and science and what have you? Well, for number one, the first thing it is is a, is a reusable spacecraft. You just hadn't seen that before, and there's really nothing like it. And it's going to be a long time before you get something that is so complex, so capable, and yet reusable. 
And then it gave us access to the low Earth orbit on a somewhat routine basis, and it allowed us to build the International Space Station. As far as medical breakthroughs, that's where the, the real, uh, real money is going to be earned, so to speak, is on the International Space Station. We've now completed the International Space Station, so now we can enter an era of utilization where we do that, breaking, uh, that groundbreaking research where we can help uh, find out how to make medicines target cancer better, how to understand how the human body reacts to long times in space, and also how to make an environmental system last for more than six months so we can take those long journeys to go up to the moon or to Mars. And so it's, uh, the space has enabled all that, and it's done an absolutely magnificent job. And Doug Hurley, when we were on the ground in Houston, you talked specifically about how you wanted to pay tribute to all the hundreds of thousands of people who over the last 30 years have contributed to this, to this program. Uh, and, and given you the ability to be where you are right now. So as you return, as you prepare to return to the Kennedy Space Center, your thoughts on, on all of those people, and specifically the people on the ground now who are preparing for your landing and who many of whom may be out of a job within the next few weeks. Yeah, we, we really, uh, you know, we really just want to honor them, and, and we've done our best uh, up to this time on the mission to do that. And... Uh, yeah, we're we're very excited about seeing those folks, especially the uh, Kennedy folks. Uh, hopefully tomorrow morning, and uh, you know, just try to share the memories of the mission with them, and uh, and and once again, just convey how proud we are of them and what they've done over this 30-year program. It, it it's just so inspiring to see the passion that all these folks have for space business. And, you know, they put their careers into this business, into, the, into this vehicle. And, uh, you know, we owe it to them to just honor what they've done and honor their accomplishments. And, uh, you know, we were, we were just lucky enough to be the ones that got to fly it. But, uh, you know, they're the ones that really made it happen. NBC last question. I'll tell you what, we'll wrap it up there. It's been an honor to talk to you. We wish you a tremendous success on your return visit. We'll be on the ground waiting for you. Godspeed and safe return. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Atlantis, this is Houston ACR. On behalf of the audio control room, the NASA television production team, and the JSC Public Affairs Office. It's been an honor to serve with you over the years and on this last mission of the Space Shuttle program. Thank you. That concludes the event. Hey, ACR, before you go, I'll tell you what, whenever we hear your voice, we know we're in space and it makes us smile. Thanks so much for, uh, for helping us bring the word to everybody in America about what we're doing up here. And uh, we look forward to hearing your voice aboard the International Space Station. And uh, wherever we go beyond the space shuttle, we hope you're there. Thank you for that, uh, Atlantis. And Mission Control Houston would also like to thank ABC News, CBS News, CNN, Fox News, and NBC News. And Atlantis will go ahead and continue back with our normal communications.